Hi, my name is Andy and in this video uh, I just want to show you this uh, Second World War uh, uh, bomb fuse. Uh, it was given to me by my brother Chris uh, in the 1970s and uh, he found uh, this uh, when uh, he was out diving uh, one day and uh, when he found it it had a uh, uh, a, a file on the back, a, a copper or brass file tube that extended about 10 inches uh, from the back and uh, this fuse would have been screwed into a bomb and uh, that file would have extended into the bomb and uh, that would have detonated uh, uh, the bomb when, the, when the, it was called to do so and uh, somehow he removed that file and uh, disarmed it and uh, the idea of this device is that it's, uh, it creates a delay so after impact uh, uh, the, the, uh, the bomb would land and there's a, a firing pin that rushes forward and strikes a primer that I'll show you in a second and um, then depending on where uh, this graduated ring is set there would be a delay after the impact and uh, the idea was to try and do as much damage as possible I guess so rather than having the bomb go off bang on the surface immediately on impact uh, it could be arranged to uh, go bang sometime after this thing had carried on penetrating into the earth so it would produce a, a massive crater if anybody knows more about this uh, than I mentioned here please uh, put it in the comments box as uh, um, I'm in maybe uh, not 100% certain of some of the facts uh, here. But uh, anyway, um, it weighs uh, just, on, uh, just under a kilo, just over um, uh, two pounds, um, and it's all brass construction. This is the little uh, primer, and um, when I uh, had this first of all it had got uh, bits of powder in the, uh, in the, uh, the bomb uh, fuse and uh, I, I set fire to that and it was a little bit exciting. Um, so you can see a little hole in the end of uh, that primer and that's where the firing pin goes. And uh, so this was like a, a little precaution cap I, I guess. And there's a, a little holder um, there that uh, that holds that so and that goes into obviously into there and uh, you can see here there's um, a little firing pin it's rusted into uh, the brass body at the moment so uh, and I haven't tried to dislodge it because I think it'll, it'll spoil it and there was probably a spring or something to make sure that that stayed back don't know that supposition um, uh, but uh, being in salt water I guess that uh, could have rusted away a long time ago never seen that so that's that's my my guess um, when I uh, first received this there were two brass uh, uh, rods here which I've drilled out and that's allowed me to take out this uh, upper uh, annular ring and um, when the uh, the, the uh, primer uh, was ignited there would have been a flash uh, powder that went down this hole there and uh, came out the front there so just uh, coming out there and that uh, lines up very neatly with uh, this hole um, so uh, some daylight through there so you can see there's a hole there and um, so that the flash would go through that hole and then uh, in this area uh, there was uh, black powder some sort of black powder um, which uh, I ignited and it, it burned but not spectacularly but it was a bit of fun and uh, this uh, this ring this whole ring was covered with uh, a tissue paper that uh, I guess kept that powder in place like uh, cigarette paper so 
that ring was fixed and then this ring is adjustable this next ring down and I guess the uh, armourer would have uh, selected the uh, appropriate uh, figure on this uh, scale and um, uh, this scale is from 0 to 22 uh, and each division has a subdivision of 10 so that's 220 uh, divisions so I guess the uh, the armorer would have um, had a tool to uh, to allow him to set this and then uh, what that does is it effectively moves that aperture sorry I'm not sure if you're getting that it moves that aperture further away from uh, from the start point here so the flash would come through the hole into this area and the powder would burn around and the further this hole was away from the start uh, so there would be a greater delay and if we look at this and we set it at uh, zero there uh, then the flash would have gone through the hole straight through this hole straight through that hole and down into the next layer um, okay and if we set it to a higher number so if we set it to 22 then of course the flash has gone through and it would have to burn all the way around till it got to the point that lines up uh, with the hole there and again uh, it would flash through there and then burn all the way back and all the way back uh, to go down this hole there. Uh, there's another layer which I haven't fully explored I must admit. Uh, so uh, once the uh, flash has gone down there it then goes into this chamber and uh, there's the remnants of a little bit of canvas uh, there that held the powder in place not sure what that hole was I can't remember I got a feeling there may have been a bit of lead in there but I really can't remember but anyway the flash would have come through there and then it would have gone into uh, this part which you'll remember I said had got the uh, uh, the file on the back but um, anyway I just thought it's something that uh, you're not likely to see every day little markings on here I'll get some close-ups So there there's a large C and CM in the middle of it and then AD and the C and the War Ministry mark in the centre of the C and then the D and of course these, uh, these two arrows there on uh, this part of the body um, there's uh, uh, what looks like BMC so whether or not that was British Motor Company which it could well have been as I think they made armaments there in Longbridge and then that has uh, 3040 there uh, three stars and there are some other marks here which look like number 80 and then it looks like V double I N dot EC but I'm not sure about those. This is a picture of my brother Chris uh, on the left with his mate uh, George and that picture would have been taken sometime around the 1970s about the sort of time that Chris gave me that fuse. I'm sure the uh, diving gear has uh, moved on a little bit since uh, this picture was taken. If you know a little bit more about it, please uh, put it in the comments box and um, you know I'd like to share this thing. At one point, I think when uh, Chris found this, it had a, a metal cover over the top that had been soldered and there's a little bit of a solder witness along there. So presumably they were locked into place. Uh, again, I may have invented that, but I think that's what he told me. 
Uh, he also told me that they were in a, a wooden box that had decayed and there were four of them standing like this and the file pointing up and the box had rotted away and uh, the four fuses had fallen over and made a star shape so there was one there one there one there and one there f f making the the, uh, uh, the cross uh, shape um, okay I hope you found that interesting I say something you don't see every day uh, thanks for watching do let me have your uh, comments and feedback as uh, I'd love to know a bit more about it bye bye